What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're bringing it back to our once weekly, but now whenever I can do it, rewatch for the DCEU Cinematic Universe with the third film in the universe, Suicide Squad. A little backstory first, now my first ever experience with this universe as a whole. I wasn't the biggest fan. I thought the spirit was wrong with Superman. I didn't think there was enough contrast between Batman and Superman to fully benefit off of a versus film. I just wasn't digging it until Suicide Squad came out. DC's Guardians of the Galaxy, so to speak. Their one outlandish film that takes a risk from the safe heroes we've seen in our entire lives. And I dug it, while basically the rest of the world didn't. Basically, I was seeing this entire franchise the opposite as everybody else, but this rewatch has been opening my eyes a little bit for the other films. So does that mean that my love for this film will dither for the same reason? Or is this solecism of a film still got what it takes to be great in my opinion? Let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, solecism. Something deviating from the proper, normal, or accepted order. Suicide Squad tells the story of a group of imprisoned supervillains who are handpicked by the government to be their contingency plan for when the next Superman comes to Earth. But only this time, the Superman won't be so nice. These villains named the titular Suicide Squad are forced to be heroic when a magical witch starts attacking the world with a swirling ring of trash for no apparent reason. Okay. Okay, I can see where people don't like this movie. I can. But we will get to that in a hot second, don't worry. First, let's start off by talking about the positives because it's important to give credit where credit is due. It's easy to see the inspiration behind this film, right? Guardians of the Galaxy, both in its lighting, color palette, music, and a group of somewhat unknown characters who turn into the unlikely hero role, right? So it's not fully original if you look at it that way, and yet I think it still feels original and feels different, and to me that's the most important aspect of originality. Not necessarily what's technically original, but its approach. Its approach can always be original, and its approach kind of dictates how you feel about the movie as a whole. The approach for this film, I dug it. I dug it the first time that I saw it, and I dug it this time. This film is crazy in the best possible way. I dug these characters. I dug the chemistry. I dug the anti-hero take. Most of the actors here are killing it in their respective roles, especially Will Smith as Deadshot and Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. And it kills me that the next Suicide Squad won't have these characters again. Except maybe for Harley Quinn. They do definitely like their Harley Quinn. But disregarding everybody else seems like an oversight. But I do trust James Gunn, and I've mentioned it before. It's worth mentioning that the visuals in this film are insane. Sure, there's an overabundance of CGI later on in the film, but the neon lighting and the color palette used throughout the film is super distinct, and in a lot of ways, it's beautiful. Heck, if you can check it out in 3D, do that too, because that only enhances the experience. But we couldn't do this review without talking about the big elephant in the room. The whole thing, the entire thing from beginning to end, was unnecessary. Pointless. The big bad in this film would have never even been an issue if they didn't create the Suicide Squad in the first place. That is a massive, massive narrative issue that most films easily avoid if they try even a little bit. And then there's yet another elephant in the room, and that is the bad guy's motive. What the heck are they even doing, and why are they doing it? That's also not evidently clear. Most of the time, all you really see is Cara Develine's character writhing about under a swirling ring of trash in the sky, which isn't doing a whole lot of anything other than rotating. She claims she's making a machine, or a weapon, or something generic like that, but we don't ever see that weapon. We don't know what the weapon is supposed to do, or anything. Anything. My god, they didn't think at all about the importance of the bad guys. They had all this focus on the heroes of the film, their chemistry with one another, their dialogue together, and anything regarding villains is horrible. It's worse than that too because all of the faceless bogeys the heroes run into from beginning to end. They were basically the putties from Power Rangers or the red shirts in Star Trek. Did we ever really see them as real threats? No, of course not. How could we? It's not exactly a battle of wits. These heroes aren't exactly meeting their matches or anything. The entire plot progression honestly aggravates me with this film, and I can see it aggravating others to the point of giving the entire thing a crap score. But that's not who I am. Me being against the plot, against the villains, and all that is mostly bias. And for the most part, I do consider this film to do everything it intended to do from the get-go, and that's actually pretty important. 
I don't have to love everything about a movie. That's not my job. It helps. Don't get me wrong, but that's not my job. My job is to give credit where it's due. And there's a lot of things happening in this film, as I've already mentioned. I can't fully agree with the decisions that they took with the villains, but I love most of the characters, the visuals, the music choices, and a whole lot more that we don't have time to discuss. In general, it's not a bad movie. I enjoy it regardless of its problems. This is a rare case where my bias agrees with the unbiased score, and both were 82%, which means that when it's averaged out, it obviously comes out to 82%, 82 out of 100 possible stars, grinding with a letter grade of B-. minus. I like it. I have no problem watching this movie on repeat. Yeah, the villains suck. They aren't the greatest, but that's hardly the end of the world for me. Guys, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this film in the comments down below. Do you think it's a love it or hate it film? Do you think it's underrated and deserves a little bit more credit like I do? Let me know. As for YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button if you like this review and would like to see some others like it. Hit the thumbs up button because that always helps up my channel. And don't forget about the little bell icon because that'll help notify you when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.